Hi guys, like my new fashion statement. This is where we are, hiding behind. It's comical, that's why the superhero guys kind of, man, it's so grievous to the Holy Spirit that it's throwing a little bit of humor in here. I may probably actually start wearing this. I was praying, I said, Lord, what do you want me to put on here? This message. I don't really have a scripture. Jeremiah 3 and 11. We've been trying to justify our sin as a country. That's where I'm at, guys. Okay, I put out, you know, all right, I'm, God's looking for Daniels, Esther's, Meshach, Shadrach, Kedabendios, Peter's, Paul's. The message I put out about Daniel why they were missing the, the reason of him was because it wasn't that he saved his skin from the lions. And he did. Miraculous. God's always unto something. He's got a plan. Jesus, before the cross, knew what was coming. He knew the plan. Jeremiah 29 11 the plans I have for you man guys the plan was to change the nation what did the king do Daniel where are you I'm here king oh king live forever put out a decree one day the decree was you're going to bow to me and this idol and this golden me. And the next day it was we're going to worship the God of Daniel. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, the same thing. Esther, you didn't walk into the king's palace and say, hey, you know, Haman's got these plans and he's going to do all this, the various stuff. You do that nowadays and you, you political suicide. You get lawyers up the wazoo on you. You get the world mad at you. It's all this stuff. You didn't walk into the king's palace and say, hey, dude. Because Haman had some imps. Some people that were under the demonic influence were ready to cut, cut her, slice her throat. Don't you think she had a little apprehension? Save the nation. Because we're obedience. So he's looking for guys but this back on this mask thing just for a brief second okay hadn't been in this store in for a long time months because he'd been closed a friend of mine we became friends i'd walk in there and you know buy my little stuff whatever i was going to do um he'd be reading his bible korean guy he'd be reading his bible telling me about you know how he did in korea and stuff always there worked six seven days a week hard working guy nice guy him and his wife we talk about Jesus, God, Holy Ghost, some really deep stuff. And I wouldn't be there a long time, sometimes five, ten minutes, most of the time five. But walked in there, and I don't wear a mask, guys. He looked at me, and there's a box of masks over there. He looked at his wife. I didn't say anything at first, but then he said, he said something to his wife, and his wife, and then his wife came to me and said, you have to wear a mask. And he said, you have to wear a mask or leave. Okay. I did leave, but he said the city of Dallas was in his parking lot, hawking, watching the violators, waiting to pounce on him or his patrons for not wearing a mask. Okay. I couldn't buy. Couldn't even be in a store, and he couldn't sell. Does that not sound like the mark of the beast, guys? We just took it. 99% of the church has capitulated. That's why my message is, where are you, church? Where's your Holy Ghost backbone? I was in this one church. And where was I going with this? Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, 
Why do you have the preachers say? They don't have the Holy Ghost. They got the Holy Ghost. He used to say things like, we're so busy, we're caught up, and our minds have been bent and twisted a lot by technology, honestly, guys. That's why I don't like YouTube, Facebook, and all this other stuff. And, and you think I'm wrong? No, I'm not. Okay, my grandkids were watching the show, Minecraft. And I listened, listened to it. They, they just were absorbed in it. You could sit there for hours. And I was listening to it a little bit and watching it. And I went 30 seconds into it, a minute. And I was like so annoyed. I was like, I to say, dude, shut up. They were just, even the words, Minecraft. It's like, just, man, they were absorbed in this stuff. 1980s, he used to say, the last days are <coughs> going to be wizards that peep and mutter. He said it was the computer. In the 80s, no cell phones, no none of that, no tablets, no Nintendo probably even, I don't think. Well, yeah, maybe Nintendo, but very little stuff. And I'm going to say this, I'm going to end with this. Okay, so you'll kind of see where I'm at. Okay, a lot of, we look at a lot of my messages about the masks are mandatory. No, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost are. Who's your source? We've got to get wheat between the porch and the altar, guys. There's all this mayhem going on all around us, and I'm tired of the, of the demonic stuff that's going on all around us. Tired of the vessels that were created for honor and the vessels that were created for dishonor. It isn't Democrats versus Republicans, it's God versus the devil, good versus evil. And some of them are, are demonized listening to their father. I'm tired of it, guys, and so is God. You don't like those pages in the Bible that I just quoted? Tear them out. You'll have a holy Bible, all right? So be so full of holes, you won't recognize it. The 5 a.m. prayer is so important, guys. It's not because I picked it or anything. God picked it. I got this head in prayer. And he said, tell the nation to start praying at 5 in the morning. It's time to weep and pray and humble ourselves before the altar. Okay, guys? I'm going to pick on a couple issues. There's more than one multiple. But... The defunding of the police, okay? That's a big hot button. I know a cop who knows who I'm talking about. I'm not going to say a name in Dallas. Talking to him one day. It's right after the police shootings here in Dallas. And he said, Steve, he said, everybody was running from the gunman. He said, but we had to run to them. And we're going to and I have a backbone, and yeah, I get it. You know, there's some bad apples in there. That cop that killed that the Floyd, you know, whether he's a criminal or not, he didn't deserve what he what he what happened to him. I agree, hundred percent. That was a horrific, evil guy. He was one of the vessels for dishonor. Ninety percent of I don't know what the percentage is. Most of them are there for the right reason, guys. Honestly, yeah, you get a few of them, and sometimes they kind of ruffle your feathers, and you know, you get a speeding ticket, and the first thing out of people's mouths is, you know, who, you know who pays who pay who pays you? I pay my tax. Blah blah blah. You were speeding. That's kind of the Jeremiah three and eleven. We want to waffle and con God talk our way out of it we've been in sin guys we've idolized we've idolized abortion destroying babies lives guys sorry you don't think we've idolized death look at what's happening now with all this black life movement stuff look at what happens in all the videos the horror movies been going on a long time, guys. The disrespect, the just man, the just utter chaos. Man, put the shoe on the other foot. If you were God looking at this mess, what would you say or do?
I get it. You could probably say I'm brainwashed or whatever. Guys, I'm going to end with this. I'm a poster child for CNN, for racism, for a racist. I'm an old white guy, uneducated, that voted for Trump. Not a racist. And I could, the proof's in the pudding. I was uneducated because I was on LSD most of my life in high school and got kicked out. Went to one year of college. I am old. I did vote for Trump because I like his stance on, on abortion issues. It was one of the main reasons. I like a lot of the other stuff he's doing. But 18 years old, left the state, running from the law, hot on my trail. And I was in trouble, guys. I was facing prison. Did everything they said. They made mean, 30 years hanging over my head, guys. Left. They're not looking for me no more. This was 40 years ago. Wasn't even it done. It was drug related. Okay? I'll leave it at that. Got saved, set free. And guess where God set me? Nine years. Six in North Dallas, sitting in an all black church. Literally, guys, I was probably the token white guy, honestly. I'm saying this because I can say this with authority because I'm not racist and I know I'm not. God knows my heart. I was just glad to be saved and set free. One day I'm listening to The Who and Leonard Skinner, and the next day I'm sitting in five hours worth of worship and praise and black gospel music in North Dallas in a poor black church that couldn't even afford the air conditioning, and it's hot, Texas. Actually, the building didn't even have air conditioning, and it's right in the smack dab middle, Preston Road in Spring Valley of million dollar houses. George Bush, that's houses over by there. I mean, there's some nice places building was kind of a little dilapidated nice looking old historic building but we had the windows up six years i sat under him i got saved under a black minister from california the holy ghost center death another black minister in a small home church the reason why i liked where i was sitting was because this was in the 80s and the guy was in the 60s. The preacher was a big old black farm boy guy. Man, he saw Vietnam, he saw crap, he was in the third. Don't you think he saw some hatred and ugliness towards his race? I got really close to him, okay? Put a new roof on the church. There was 30, 40 people there he called a work party. Me and him. I'm working two jobs, construction, and delivering pizzas, and working until two or three in the morning. They had to be to work at six in the morning the next morning. He would work all day long and wash windows, and whatever money he could scrounge up, he would buy, you know, how many of our shingles he could, we'd work till they were put on. It took us a month to do it. Me and him, black and white guy. But you know what? He never preached a racial message once. Yeah, he's like all of us. He had issues in different areas, some, but he was really good preacher, full of God, full of the Holy Ghost. And like I said, I was just glad to be saved. Who, who, who was I to tell God where I, I didn't, you know, I was raised Catholic. I didn't know much about God and not the, hardly nothing about Jesus, of course. I'm not just picking on that one denomination. I'm just saying part of my journey, part of our, our journey. So he's looking for some Daniels, Esthers, Peters, Pauls. Get some backbone, guys, some Holy Ghost backbone. No, enough. I'm not listening to these ungodly laws because it's that's what it is, it's hiding. We're trying to justify it. Oh, it's because of health. Oh, man, 
Even the scientists can't even figure that one out or come up with the same conclusion. We all know, we all know it's fake, most of it. It's, the disease isn't fake, it's real, it's actually killing people and I don't want to mock any of that because there's a lot of hurt there. One of the biggest loud mouths, you'll know who I'm talking about, but some young lady. And we listened to her. And we listened to the Nancys of the world too, and they they don't care that people are dying. Oh, so we lose a few jobs. It's not the jobs, guys. People are people, Some people are committing suicide because of it. Some people are losing their homes because of it. People are about to go hungry, people, homeless. And people are going to die. And they are dying. And this, all this other crap. And then we let them just riot and raid hell in the streets. One black guy that, what is that? All that gar I turned my news off. but the, That's why I just get what's on the internet. And I try to be very selective, but. What was that chop or whatever it was that garbage in Seattle? Only person that called him that had any was President Trump. Man, that man's hurting. He lost his 19. I think it was a 19 year old son. The guy is in pain, guys. He's a very hurt, hurt person. Angry. Rightfully so, angry at the, the system, probably even angry at God, honestly. Not, you know, I'm not knocking him. Where would you be? Put yourself in his shoes. Man, he's got a lot of hurt. There was a black lady that, you know, her, her, it was her uncle or her brother or somebody. Where's his life? There was all kinds of people. One guy was, a, you know, blacks and whites. And now there's this young mother that was killed because she said, all oh, lives matter. You don't agree with people and they shoot you. So I put on their Joel's army, guys. It's time to rise and shine. Arm ourselves, but with the spirit of the Lord, which is the sword, which is the word. That's why I said your source. Who's your source? God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word. Your AR-15 and 300 rounds ain't going to do squat. Sorry. I know that's not going to go over real well, especially down here in hillbilly land in Texas pickup truck and a gun everywhere you go. That's what not what made America great is our military and our strength. It was what we got on our knees. We want this country back. See at five in the morning tomorrow. I'll poke my head out. My address is different than yours in my street. And the reason why I'm not posting that is because I don't Someone's trying to say some stuff. I don't want my house firebombed either. I can stand and take a bullet for Jesus. But I don't want my family to suffer because of it. My wife, grandkids, or children. Me, stick a fork in it. It's a done deal. That's my wife. When I get to that point, I'm past that point. Mask is coming off. Gloves are coming off. All hell's breaking loose all around us anyhow. Guess what? All hell's breaking loose. <sighs> Prayer is going to change it. Because it's the listening to God and the direction. He said he'd be a lamp on our feet, a light on our path, a direction. We're not listening. We're busy barking at each other about politics and about wear a mask or not wear a mask or about this and that and you know what I do too I kind of get caught up in some of it too I have to be very careful on the stuff he tells me sometimes it's taken I messaged you on how God sees America concerning abortion it was two years in the making I had the dream and I sat on it for two years because I couldn't I, it just it, I never got the clearance from God to release it same one with about the storm that's coming I posted that one, 8-11, there's a storm coming to 9-11. I don't like the dates. I don't like the sensationalism of it, guys, because that's where the church went to. Everything's sensationalized. The world's sensationalized. The computers, the, everything's at hyper speed. I'm old school. I'm just going to preach the gospel. 
I guess I watched too much Star Trek as a kid. I'm gonna go boldly where no man has gone before. Scotty, beam me up, Captain. Or Captain Kirk, beam me up, Scotty. I got no power. That's where the church has been at. We've been disconnected. One virus took us out. Nobody wants to hear that. I'll end with this. I don't, this was a dream I had. I'm gonna put this out of the message. In this dream, and he added to it the, the day later, but the first part he didn't add, but this, this he added a day later to the dream, but it was in a vision and I'll put him just talking to me in prayer. He said, we become a nation of idolatry, complainers and wine bags. As I get the idolatry, I put out a message, holiday idols. Guys, I'm just gonna touch this a little bit, look it up. We don't know what day Christ was born. We picked January, Christmas 25th. Are you and bicker about it or whatever, you know? I don't really know. I don't think anybody, anybody does. People might jump on that and try to prove their point. But it's a day we picked. That's okay. Representative of it. We replaced Jesus with Santa Claus. An $800 Christmas tree. Lights. Black Friday. Christmas starts in July. It's all about the retailers and how much money they're going to make. You can't even say Merry Christmas. It has to be Xmas or whatever. It's all about the gifts, da, 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 just hoopla. Man, I'm telling you, the complaining was a warning to us. He said that's what the children of Israel did. They complained about the man and they came from having the sustenance from God. It's not going to be like where you can go to Subway and get your bread in 18 different flavors and every kind you want or, or wherever, you know, even a good restaurant or whatever, you know. It may be the plain Jane told him not to stack it up. Very specific, but it was sustenance. And we complain about that stuff. We've been complaining. And the wine bags, I asked him that in the dream. I said, Lord, wine bags? What? Kind of was, you know, it was a pretty, he said, you know, like the cheap kind you get a dollar at the dollar store that don't work because they're too cheap. The seal doesn't seal properly. You can't seal it. He said, we, our seal's been broke. We let the Holy Ghost out. Some of us have been sealed and haven't let the Holy Ghost in. He said, I can't pour out my spirit, my new wine, into old wine skins into wine bags. Why do you think this coronavirus, why do you think he even let it happen, guys? He is a good God whose grace and mercy is sufficient. You're still here, aren't you? You're still alive and breathing, aren't you? You still have a chance to repent and get on your knees and meet me at five in the morning or pray right now, tonight. And get it right with God. While you can, while we can. His grace and mercy is sufficient, guys. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm gonna rejoice and be glad in it. There's some really good news. But we've got to listen. There's even more to that than I can say. When I've got a really good message, I'm listening. <sighs> Make it too long. But guys, he's looking for, you know, men and women. Yeah, women. Okay, I'll end with this. Got this in prayer, seeking God. Saw my wife spare her life, saw what she did. We were in the string at the shelter, saw what an impact she was really making on these people. And I hear all this other barking about women, just garbage, kind of, you know. It didn't sit right with me. The Holy Ghost, it grieved my spirit. But I didn't have the answer. That's what I'm telling you. That's the beauty of the cross. For everyone out there, including from Donald Trump to the drunk bum on the street, to Putin himself. We all have access if we want it. And I've said, Jesus, I don't get it. 
show me. And this is what he does for me a lot. Just me. It may not it may be different for you, but for me, it's, he takes me to the Word. He said, go to Genesis 1, 26 and 27. This was two years ago. I got it written down. I got a YouTube video on it even. So there it is. 26 is about how he created mankind in his image, man in his image. 27 is so he created both male and female. There's plenty more. I put that out there and a friend of mine put it out, out there and broke it down even more into more scriptures. We didn't separate. I mean, God didn't separate. Man, and when God, guys did, it was for convenience and just, man, it's pretty twisted up. It's racist by itself, honestly. Yes, I get it. There's different roles. Yes, I get it. They're not going to have the motherly stuff. Yes, I get it. <laughs> but it's the vessel thing where they created for. Not to be subservants less than and all this other stuff. So anyhow, <clears throat> yes, he's looking for the Esters. Where would we be without Moses' mother? Where would we be without Billy Graham's mother? many others. What would we be at without Jesus' mother? Being obedient. Man. Nowadays, nobody cares about the virgin virginity and all that stuff. But back then, it was a pretty big deal. Might have even got killed for, for it. Honestly. All the laws and regulations and rules and Love you guys. Are you going to get some backbone with me? Are you going to pray and ask him what to do? And seek him and listen? I'm not talking with just, you know. If he tells you something to do, do it. And we'll let the outcome be his. So he can get the glory. I'm going to end with this. Gideon's army. Powered down to 300. But when he was getting down to the last and he sent them home and told them to go drink water, everybody was thirsty. The world's thirsty, hunger and thirst, and that's righteousness. A lot of them just stuck their face right in the water. But the ones that drank, but were still aware of what was going on and looking around. That's what I'm saying. It's not awake. It's rise and shine. Are you going to be part of Joel's army or are you going to sit on your butt and be a do-nothing, wine-bag, hypocritical, complaining, trying to talk your way out of it with God, like Jeremiah 3.11, but read the whole scripture, justifying our sin? Or are you just going to say, Jesus, what would you do? Because I don't know. Look unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith. Bring it before him, how you raise your kids, what we do with the coronavirus, what we do with the president, what we do with the media, what we do with the demonic influences of every congressman to governors to mayors. To <clears throat> Man, where do you think they're coming from? Where's their source coming from? The pits of hell, guys. Are you gonna put your mask on? Are you going to stand for him? Seriously, it's not, it's not, it's not symbolic anymore. It is, but it isn't. This, this symbolizes the mark of the beast. Very sorry to tell you that. Nobody wants to hear that. Everybody wants to hear the blessed life and you're going to get a new car and a new house out of the deal. You might, but you might not. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. I will put out another message. So this one's gotten a little too long. Love you guys.